A lot of people believe that of our faith. It's just fairy tales. Oh, you just believe in fairy tales. Welcome back to episode 110 of the What's It Up podcast. I'm your host, Pete Dill. We are going to be answering some hard questions about our faith in today's episode. Thank you for spending some time with me today. Thank you for checking in, stopping by. I appreciate you so much. So first question of this episode talks about careers, careers and God. So as I'm switching careers, and it's a career path that I really want to get into, I want to find ways to glorify and honor God, even if the work I do isn't necessarily as life-saving as the ones I used to do. I just feel selfish for choosing a a job. I just feel selfish for choosing a job that isn't as integral to helping humans as the health field is. How can I glorify God in a different career? Great question. Great question. Love this question. I did not work in a, in I work I work, I'm in the marketplace. I'm a man of the marketplace. I work out in the corporate world. I work in a non-media or non-ministry related field. I work in a, you know, not Catholic environment. I work in a non, you know, uh, Christian field of our, although there are good Christians there. Um, it's not a it's not a, not an inherently Christian place. So I, I work in the corporate world, the corporate world. Um, and this is a great question and an important question. And here's the thing. I think the mission of our lives isn't to be in holy places and holy careers at all times. The mission of our lives is to be holy in all places and all careers. You know, the the mission of our lives isn't to be in holy places and holy careers. The mission of our lives is to be holy in places and in our careers. And this is something I've been challenged with, both in my corporate job. Um, Yeah, I've been been really challenged with my corporate job, which is like, oh, you know, uh... You know, this isn't like a, an inherently, you know, holy place. There's other people who were, you know, missionaries and people who are working for archdiocese. And, you know, that's so nice that, you know, pe- you know, people get to do that. That's such a holy environment always. But here's the thing. Like, God's calling us to all parts of society and all parts. God is calling us to all parts of society and all different jobs. And it's up to us to answer that call, to go to those jobs and parts of society and to be holy in those jobs. Every single person can't be, you know, a missionary. Every single person can't be a youth minister or a, you know, DRE or a priest or a, you know, fundraiser for a a religious organization. Every single person can't work in a holy environment. But every single person can be holy in any environment. So that's really important. And trust me, as someone in the corporate world, there are a million opportunities to be holy and evangelize in the corporate world. People are desperately seeking. Everyone is seeking. Just like how people at your the holy job, the peer, the people at the, you know, religious job, the Catholic job is seeking. People at non-Catholic jobs are seeking. Everyone is seeking. Everyone is seeking for Christ and everyone's thirsting for Christ the truth and good news that the gospel is. So there are so many opportunities to talk about God and so many opportunities to share the good news of the gospel and share about your life in a professional setting, whether it's, you know, in the office or out of the office, there's a lot of opportunities. I've had a lot of great conversations at work and with people from work, outside of work, about the faith because it comes up. When you, you know, the word holy needs to be set apart. We all know this. So when you're a little bit set apart, it stands out. So even if you're not really trying to be holy, you're not like walking in saying the rosary, just by the nature of your attitude and by the nature of your perspective on life, and I'm not even talking about political perspectives, I'm just talking about perspective on life, you know, being open to life, being, you know, uh, 
married, having, you know, having a great attitude about your spouse, that that's an example of, that's an example for people. Having a great attitude at work, that's an example for people. People will eventually ask you, what's, what's up with you? What's your deal? <laughs> Why are you a little different? You're positive about things. That's different. There's so many opportunities to share the gospel in a corporate job and in just a regular job. And in fact, we need to be out there. Uh, Catholics, we can't just be in all, we can't just be in only religious jobs. We have to go be out in society and spreading the good news because if we don't do it, who will? Who else is going to do it? <laughs> if we're not doing it, who else is going to do it? So I think the best example of this, or great example of this, is, is Opus Dei. You know, the mission of Opus Dei, and I'm, I wrote this down, so I'm going to get it word for word. The mission of Opus Dei is to help ordinary Christians understand that their lives are a way of holiness and evangelization. Members believe that they are called to serve God through their personal spiritual acts and their conduct in their professional and family lives. The goal is to bring the faith into the whole life, including the home, work, and play. So it's finding God in everyday life. I love that. Jose, Ma Jose Maria Escriva, you know, started Opus Dei. And, you know, he was a simple man, a simple priest who believed in the power of everyday life and being a witness in everyday life. So it's not about, you know, being holy or living out the faith or sharing the gospel. Is it about the environment we were in. We could all it's all it's conditional. We could only be holy in these environments. It's like no, you can actually be holy anywhere and everywhere. And in fact, I think God me is I think there's a big challenge for us as Catholics in America to be holy in areas that aren't necessarily Catholic environments. I think it's honest to bring the faith out there more. I think we need to get out of our minds this idea that only for doing big grand holy things is it good and if we're just in a regular job that's not good it's it's okay it helps pay the bills but you know it's not like i don't know it's not like you know working at a parish or it's not like going to you know work for you know college ministry or or you know work for a catholic charities it's like no actually the corporate world is a mission field just like anywhere else. And I think as Catholics, we need to be not afraid of going out there and just spreading the good news in the corporate world and have and understand that our mission and purpose in life can be fulfilled in corporate jobs and regular jobs. Um, yeah, so great question. Doesn't matter the job you do, you can be holy anywhere. <laughs> and we need holy people everywhere. So, hope that helps. Next question. I hate it when people mock God and tell lies about God. Me too. I always block whatever content it is and avoid looking at it, but sometimes it feels like it's just everywhere. How does one avoid it? I hate seeing blasphemous things about God. So, you know, the question is, how, how, you know, should we, you know, what should we do about blasphemous things, blasphemous content, blasphemous music, movies, con you know, podcasts, TV shows? First of all, most, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I agree with you. I think, you know, there's, it's funny. We live in an environment, we live in a world where people make fun of God and Christians and Catholics very easily. Um, so what do we do about it? You know, cause it's, oh, it is almost unavoidable. And I, I say this as someone who, you know, I love podcasts with comedians. You know, I love like comedians who have podcasts, um, you know, and all these stand up comedians, they don't necessarily, have the, you know, most reverent approach when talking about God or talking about anything, really. <laughs> but it's funny, these things make me laugh. And, you know, I, I go back and forth on, on it. You know, should I listen to, you know, podcasts? Can I just skip through raunchy parts? Can I skip through parts that are blasphemous that kind of listen to the funny parts where I'm talking about sports or life or whatever? And I go back and forth. And sometimes I won't listen to podcasts, you know, like raunchy podcasts, comedian podcasts. And sometimes I will and skip through parts and, um, it can be, it can be challenging. It can be challenging to know that, like, wh where's the line? Where's the line of things being sacrilegious and should we watch them? Should we not listen to them and watch them? 
So I'll say this. First and foremost, if you feel like you're being called to not watch or listen or engage or, you know, you know, interact with content, video, TV shows, podcasts that are pulling you away from the faith, then don't. You know, if something's openly blasphemous, just don't watch it. You know, don't listen to it. Just don't. Maybe as a rule of thumb. If you feel like that maybe there's some things that are borderline, you don't really know, and I don't know. Again, listen to your conscience. Listen to your conscience. And if God's feeling like, if God's calling you to say, hey, stop listening to that podcast. Hey, you shouldn't be watching this TV show. And you feel like it's on your heart? Then maybe stop. Just see how it feels. Stop. Try it out. Try stopping. Try not listening to it. Try not watching it. It's a good question. I actually would love to hear what you guys think about this mostly. Like, I would love to hear what you guys think about this. Of like, where is the line of something that's blasphemous or raunchy? And, you know, can you watch a show? What do you guys think about watching a show like Game of Thrones or listening to a podcast that's kind of raunchy or, uh, you know, watching a movie that has a lot of violence in it or, you know, maybe is really good but has scenes that are blasphemous and... Oh, wrong conk. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Where's the line? You know, am I... Do you feel like what I'm saying is good? Is it appropriate? Is it too lenient? I don't know. But it this one spoke to me because I feel like I also struggle with this. Um, and I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this because I want to... I want to know what you guys think. And I want to grow too. Um, so let me know. Comment, DM, email about how you deal with content, videos, podcasts, shows, movies, songs that toe that line of blasphemous or raunchy or inappropriate. And what do you do about it? I'd love to hear from you. Okay. Next question. Despite my faith and beliefs, obviously sometimes I still question things. Don't we all? So... Could we say that the religion, the religion we believe in is just a fairy tale? Are the stories made up by our ancestors to dictate morals and values? Oh, this is a, this is a big question. The old, is it all just a fairy tale? It's all just fairy tales. Yeah, this is a, this is a tough question. This is a question people struggle with. You know, people on the outside, that's a, pe- a lot of people believe that of our faith. It's just fairy tales. Oh, you just believe in fairy tales. And it's like, no, I don't. It's not just a fairy tale. You know, I always, I, it's like, it's so hard not to like give an emotional response to that challenge. You just believe in fairy tales. No, I don't. How dare you? It's not a fairy tale. Um, But yeah, this is, this is an age old question. Is it all made up? Is it all just a fairy tale? Are we believing in pixie dust? So, here's a couple thoughts on that. So, one thing. Nothing has been discovered to disprove in God or say that all of this is made up. There's been no discovery or archaeological dig or something in anthropology Anything that's ever happened that has contradicted any of the timelines, the people, the places, the events that happened in the Bible or anything thereafter or before. Nothing has been contradicted contradicted to the point of our faith being wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like our faith has never been disproven. Now again, that's different from proving it through these um, sciences and proving it through these uh, social science or archaeological ways. And again, the Catholic Church has a robust history of archaeology, um, you know, history and, and, and science to prove these things actually happened in the Bible and in our faith. But let's, let's also be clear, like, Bible, God, these, these things have never been disproven. So, because we know these things have never been disproven, let's go to then the source. What does, like, the source say? What does Jesus say? You know, having questions about 
oh, the beliefs of this and that. But what, what does like the central figure say? The central figure, Jesus says in John 20, 29, Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you believe. Those are happy who have never seen me yet believe. So Jesus understands that, hey, it was a special time when people saw him perform works and signs works and signs and wonders and saw Jesus with their own eyes. And, and he says, you believe because you've seen me. There is other people who don't see me and still believe. But that's where we're at. The person, and this, this central figure understands that there's a level of faith, you know, with being Christian. We don't see Jesus in the flesh. And so, we want proof. We want to know these things are true and real. But again, let's go then, let's ask ourselves another question. Has this central figure, Jesus, has he ever lied? Is he trying to deceive you? What in the Bible, what in the writings of the church, the faith, would let you believe that Jesus is ever trying to deceive you. It's like, no, actually, the central figure of our faith is the opposite. He's trying to bring the truth out everywhere, and he's never deceived anything. He's never lied. He's never been called a lie. He's never been, something's never been written that says Jesus said one thing, and another thing that says Jesus said another thing. And then in the words of the Bible that Jesus says, it's, it's, it's never trying to trick us. But who does deceive? Who is the deceiver? Who is the one that, that spreads fairy tales? Ask yourself that. Ask yourself that. You have one person who's never lied, doesn't lie, never been caught in a lie, only wants to love you, Jesus. And then what's the other side? Deceit. Lies. Who is the prince of lies? I don't even need to say it. But the evil one. The evil one is the prince of lies. Confusion. Trying to get you to not believe. So what is the evil one going to do? He's going to sow discord. Sow confusion. Make you believe that you're being deceived. But remember, Jesus is not a deceiver. God is not a deceiver. He's not trying to deceive you. The evil one is a deceiver. So think about your thoughts. Like think about your, like think about it. You're saying, I'm feeling like maybe this isn't made up. Maybe I'm being tricked. Maybe this is deceiving. Maybe I'm being duped. Maybe it's all just a lie. Well, who's the prince of lies? Who's the great deceiver? Who's the one trying to trick you? It's not God. <laughs> it's not God. So if you're feeling feelings like this is all a lie, it's all, it's all made up, it's all confusion, it's all just trying to deceive me that's not coming from god because god is truth god is god is truth and god is only trying to bring you closer to the truth and that is by bringing you closer to him so feelings of deception aren't really coming from him and the and god brings us to the truth by exposing our own weakness our own sin and drawing us closer but it's not by deception so if you're feeling like you're being deceived, if you're feeling, feeling like there's deception in your faith, if you're feeling like there's confusion, you know, you got to go to the source. Go to Jesus. Go to Jesus because he's not going to lead you astray. But the evil one will lead you astray. And then think about our culture. Think about the values of our culture. Money, pain, money, fame, power, political power. That, that stuff is trying to deceive us. Pursuits of the world fail us. God never fails us. So we have a culture and a society that we know we're being deceived by in ways. You know what I mean? You hear stories of people in the highest echelons of our society lying to people, deceiving their their customers, you know, whatever it is, we know there's deception in the powers that be out in the culture. And then we think God is the one lying to us. We think it's all a lie. 
because we're like, wait a second, um, I don't know, is there enough proof? But we know for a fact the powers that be in our society are are, are lying to us. Like, how many more times do we have to see powerful men lie, cheat, and steal for us to believe that, like, maybe the pursuits of this world, the things that we hold of high esteem, this world, money, fame, power, riches, success, maybe don't have our best interests in mind. But God came down from heaven, became man, and died for us, for our sin. He had our best interests in mind. So think of John 10, 10. Think of John 10, 10. Came not to condemn, but to give life and life in abundance. So that's Jesus saying that. To give life and life in abundance. So if you're feeling like you're having thoughts and questions about, is this all made up? Is it a deception? Go to the source. What does the source, what does Jesus, the central figure of our church say? Because he's not trying to deceive you. If you feel like outside voices are maybe making you question, you know, question the validity and the truth of, of, of our faith. Okay, let's remember. The outside voices have, have, you know, they've never died for you, but Jesus has. So let's go to the source and see what Jesus says. And that can sometimes help me, that can help me, can help you hopefully understand a little bit about like, okay, this is from the words, from the mouth, these words are from the mouth of the central figure of our faith. And that can give you peace, hopefully. You know, it's a tough question, but it's a, it's a good question to deal with. Uh, cause I think we all have levels of, um, we all, none of us are immune to feeling that way sometimes to feeling like, Oh, wait a second. Hold on. Whew, I'm praying to a guy I've ever seen once in my life. But then you look back at your life and you see all the works that he's done in your life. And that's also something to remember. Look to where God has kept his promises in your life. He always keeps his promises. Life's not always going to be easy, but God's always going to keep his promises. If he says it, he will do it. Life's not going to be easy always. In fact, guarantee that following God means your life's not going to be 100% easy. There's going to be suffering. But if he says it, he will do it. Jesus does not lie. So, good, good question. So that's going to be it for me today. Please write me a comment, an email, a DM about some of the stuff we talked about, about what you think about the line, how you deal with the line for, you know, content and blasphemous and raunchy stuff tell me what you think about your job tell me if you work in a, a job um just a regular corporate job tell me how you what do you think about it what do you think about being catholic in a regular cor- corporate job and then talk to me about um you know feelings of confusion in our faith or feelings of uncertainty um tell me if going to the source and hearing jesus if that helps you if that's peaceful for you i'd love to know so um, as always, y'all, I appreciate you guys so much. Y'all are the best. Every comment, every email, every DM is just, uh, you know, it's incredible. And there's some, there's some great, there's some great things happening. I've, I've, uh, I think God is doing a lot, not only me, but I think in a lot of people to just, you know, see the truth in the gospel and not be afraid of living it and speaking about it. So thank you guys. As always, I appreciate y'all so much. Hope you have a great one. Stay cool in this summer heat. I'll talk to you soon. Peace. Bye.